Detective Stabler, this is my partner, Detective Benson. Can you tell us what happened? I can. Okay. So we're gonna get you to the hospital, all right. Anyone see where she came from? Gabby said she was staggering down the street. Okay, let's start a canvas, huh? Detective. Yeah. This man says he saw what happened. Well, I, I didn't exactly see it, but I, I heard the commotion. I looked out and I saw the ambulance. Uh, I live up there, third floor. What's your name, sir? Ron Polakoff. I, uh, I know Myra. Is she okay? She says she was raped. You know anything about that, Mr. Polakoff? She's going to say I did it. So tell me what happened after the kissing. He wouldn't stop. He was all over me. She wouldn't stop. She was all over me, which would have been fine, but I, I just I wasn't into what she wanted. Found something. There are fluids on your shoulder. What did she want? She wanted me to be rough. Not play rough, be rough. She told me to hold her down. He grabbed me by my neck really hard, and he held me down. And then what happened? I begged him to stop. And he didn't. He, what? I mean, when are you going to be done? Louise is just going to check your wounds and abrasions, and then I'm going to photograph them. Open your mouth, please. Abrasion on the tongue. She bit me. Show me your tongue. When I wouldn't hold her hard enough, she, she bit me. I mean, look at this. And then she tears me up with her nails. You fought him as hard as I could, but he had his hands around my neck. And your hands around her neck? Oh, yeah, it was the only way I could keep her from attacking me. And at this point, is it still consensual? Well, yes, but, you know, I, I just wanted to get the whole thing over with and, and get her out of my apartment. Did she ever accuse you of raping her? No, but I could tell she was upset when I didn't ask her to stay. I wasn't too surprised when I heard a commotion in the street. You're her professor. You called the shots. But you were helpless? Look, my wife left me nine months ago, and I was lonely, and I wasn't thinking straight. And this Myra, she she came at me like a like a bird hits your windshield. You know, and I, I just went off the road. I crashed. I mean, you felt that way? You think you're in control, but you're not? Parents? I can't tell her what was. You might be surprised. No, I wouldn't. I can't do this right now. I feel so. I'm so scared. Think you can make it? I don't know. Okay, try. I'll be right behind you. Miss Denning's truthfulness or lack of it is a matter of record. After rear-ending a van on the BQE last year, she told a heart-wrenching tale about being upset about her grandmother's death. So upset she couldn't walk a straight line when the officer asked her to. Well, if her grandmother died. Her grandmother miraculously came back to life and bailed her out. This time, I understand she smashed a cab window with a bottle? She was distraught. She was drunk. And I know this because my client was with her when she got herself that way. He didn't force her to drink or to have sex. Let me know when you drop the case. My client's rape kit isn't enough? Bruises, bites, contusions, strangulation marks on her neck? That could have been caused by rough sex. Are you just looking for reasons not to bring charges? This case won't be easy to win. We don't want it to fall apart. Maybe you do. Why would we? To hide the fact that Detective Stabler sexually harassed my client? Detective Benson, on what do you base your opinion Myra Denning was raped? Myra's behavior was consistent with somebody who's been sexually assaulted. She had all the symptoms of post-traumatic stress disorder. Can you elaborate? It's like when a war veteran hits the floor after a car backfires. Myra suffered an event that was so traumatic for her that her body was actually waiting for another assault. So she interpreted Detective Stabler's gesture as an attack. Well, her body did. I touched her in the hospital just to reassure her, and she flinched as if I'd hit her. Myra, what happened? Ms. Novak, my client has something to show you. Apparently, the police aren't the only ones who don't want this case to go forward. What are you talking about? I checked my email this morning, and read this. 
Whore, liar, burn in hell, I hope you die, bitch. How many are there? 30 so far. When you were at the library this morning, did you use the computer? Yeah, but it was for research. I didn't do anything wrong. He's coaching her. Sophie, did you write this email? Whore, liar, burn in hell, I hope you die, bitch. Answer the question. Sophie, answer the question. Did you send this email? Look at it. Did you send this email? Why don't you just leave us alone? Dad didn't do anything, and you destroyed his life. Right, that's enough. That's enough. You should be talking to me, not her. You sent the emails. No, Sophie did, but it's not her fault. She, she must have heard me talking on the phone about Myra. She'd have seen how upset I was. I'm responsible for this, not her. He's smart. He comes for it, he says, I did it, and we all think he's a stand-up guy. Maybe that's what he is. He just manipulated the hell out of his daughter, and he's manipulating us. The first time that I saw him, he walked right up to me, and he said, she's going to say I raped her. This guy's good. So now you don't believe him? Grand jury came back. They just wanted to indict Ron Polikov. Does Myra know? I'm on the way to tell her now. You want to come? Got a pulse. We need an ambulance. We need to have a new green point. Apartment five. Sleeping pills. Attempted suicide. Drug overdose. You know, I should have seen how depressed she was. I should have done something. Well, you did exactly what she wanted. What are you talking about? I want to take you to get to Brooklyn. 45 minutes, maybe? After you left the office, Myra called. She wanted to find out about the grand jury decision much. She told her that Polikoff had been indicted and that you were on your way to go see her. She knew that I was coming. Didn't you, on the night of the alleged rape, accuse Detective Stable of inappropriate sexual behavior? I don't remember. Let me refresh your memory. Detective Stabler gave you a ride home, helped you to your door. The next day, you claimed that he had touched you inappropriately, correct? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Yes. A police officer with 12 years of unblemished service helping the victims of rape. He groped you. No. No? So you made it up? <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, I was just confused and I was... <laughs> I was in pain and Did I... you make it up? Not at the time. And now? So you're the victim here. That's right. You recognize this photo? No. These are blow-ups of the contusions on Myra's arms. Who did this to her? I did. But Myra asked me to. And this? Strangulation bruises on Myra's neck. Did you do this, too? You have pictures of my bruises? My bite marks? Answer the question, Mr. Polikoff. Did you make these marks? Yes, but Myra told me to, and when I wouldn't, she, she, she scratched me so hard, she drew blood. You're about what, six foot four, 200 pounds? Myra Dunning is maybe 115. You still want to claim that you're the victim here? Yes. Because a woman forced you to have sex with her. No, because it's my picture in the paper, not hers. My daughter has had to change schools. My wife is suing for sole custody. I've lost my job. My life is a shambles, and all I can do is say I did not rape her. I did not rape her. <laughs>